Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's webinar looking at the Analyze Bus Open Data Service and the new corridor and route segment analysis. Um, I'm Tim Rivett. I'm going to be your host today. Um, we are recording this session, um, so um, you'll be able to uh, review what's said and share it with colleagues that couldn't join us live. Um, we do uh, look forward to your questions about the new uh, functionality and um, the uh, analyzed service uh, more widely. So please do feel free to use the chat as we go along and we'll try and um, respond um, as we go. Um, some might need to be uh, picked up um, at the end of the, uh, the demonstration. Um, but uh, we will uh, respond to you. So um, a little bit about Artig for those of you that haven't um, come across us before. We're a membership body for public transport technology stakeholders, um, and we've got membership that varies as everybody from bus operators through to suppliers and local authorities. Um, and we uh, develop and um, support implementation of technical standards, um, best practice guidance, um, and um, run sessions like this face to face and uh, and online to uh, to help make sure people know um, how you might be able to use technology in a public transport environment to uh, to improve. Uh, operations or your uh, customers' um, uh, experience. Um, enough about um, us. Um, you've come to find out about um, the latest stuff in Analyze Bus Open Data Service. This is the uh, latest in a series of sessions we've been running with Ito, who have been developing this. Um, for the Department of Transport over the last, um, well, we've been running these sessions since uh, just before the summer. Um, we've got um, them all recorded. Um, they're available on the RTIG um, YouTube channel. Um, there'll be a link uh, at the end. Um, but we've got things like uh, introductions um, to the service and, and support for new users. Um, we look at some of the enhanced data analysis. Um, in another one, we've got a session on on-time performance and quality reports. Um, and um, we've got one on uh, how you might use uh, the Analyzed Bus Open Data Service for bus service improvement plans, a bit of a hot topic at the moment. Um, today's session, though, um, is all about um, the uh, some new functionality looking at uh, corridors. Um, and so to uh, provide you with the details and run through that, I'm gonna hand over to the ETO team um, who are with us this afternoon to run through that. Um, Dan, is it you presenting? It is, yes, thanks Tim. Um, and afternoon everyone. So. Just before we dive into the content of the webinar, um, we'll just do some quick introductions um, for people on the call. Um, so EtoWorld is the DFT's technical partner for both the Bus Open Data Service and uh, the Analyze Bus Open Data Service. Um, I'm Dan Jones, I'm a product manager at EtoWorld and we have um, two other Eto members on the call. Uh, Patrick, do you wanna introduce yourself first? Thanks, Dan. And uh, yes, hi, everyone. Uh, firstly, thanks, Tim, for hosting us as always. And thank you, everyone, for attending today. It's great to see uh, the level of turnout that we're getting for these sessions. Uh, I'm Patrick Smallman, and I'm the support engineer providing support to users. And I'll pass it over to Amy. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Dan. Hi, everybody. I'm Amy Bridge. I'm head of customer success at Eto World, and so I look after um, the delivery and support team um, at Eto. Um, many of whom are working across the Bus Open Data Service and Analyze Bus Open Data Service. Back to you, Dan. Perfect. Cheers, guys. Um, 
so I'll just run through what we are going to cover in this webinar. So I'm just going to do a very quick introduction to ABOD for those that we haven't um, had joined us before and a quick review of the existing functionality that there is within the service. Um, I'll then sort of showcase the new functionality um, which we've launched today um, around corridors and route segment analysis and where that relates to journey time. Um, I'll then briefly talk about what we're aiming to move on next um, for ABOD in terms of new features coming up in the future. Um, questions, as Tim said, if, if you have any questions, please add them to the chat as we go along. Um, Amy and Patrick will try and address them if they can, otherwise we'll leave uh, plenty of time at the end to address any questions. Um, so just a quick review of what Analyze Bus Open Data looks like and how it's powered. Um, this is a kind of summary diagram of the service. So over on the left, we have the data producers, which in this case are operators, um, passing us timetables in transit exchange format and uh, vehicle location information in Siri VM format. That's published onto the service and then moves into what we call the integrated transit model. Um, this is where we sort of match those two data sets. We match the vehicle positions to the timetables, um, and then we continuously archive that information down um, to infer some analytics from it. Um, BODS itself has a variety of outputs. Um, consumers can pick up the data in its raw format. Um, they can pick up GTFS and GTFS RT data as well as using the bulk download or API functionality on the service. Um, but we're here to talk about Analyze Bus Open Data and within there, um, so far we have focused on feed monitoring and alerting, um, schedule adherence, um, and some other functions of reporting analytics, such as the corridor functionality that we'll talk about today. Um, ABLE's aim, so Analyze Bus Open Data is a part of DFT's ongoing investment into bus services, and, and it will support the national bus strategy, um, enhanced partnerships and bus service improvement plans. Um, so we hope to help um, government, local authorities, and bus operators to perform existing analysis in faster and easier ways, um, produce more detailed and accurate reports. Um, hopefully, as, as everyone has sort of the same view on the data, this will improve collaboration between different organizations um, and help identify network improvement opportunities. Um, and this data, as it's um, accessible to DFT, can also help to inform transport policy and, and also compliance monitoring uh, across the industry. So the service itself has, has been pretty well researched. So um, way back uh, last year, we ran a number of um, interview sessions and testing sessions across um, all of our different user groups. So local authorities, bus operators, DVSA, DFT, um, did a number of process mapping workshops and knowledge sharing sessions. Um, during the development earlier this year, um, we ran a number of uh, interview sessions again, um, showing people wireframes, uh, workshops with uh, local authorities and so on and since we launched the service earlier this year we've um, essentially been giving ongoing service support and as a part of that um, we can kind of collect up feedback and feature requests um, from different operators and local authorities um, and also support um, those users in using the service in, in the best way they can. Um, so since we've launched we've also got over 500 users and that's over around about 200 um, organizations, um, roughly split into the three categories, um, 120 so operators, AT or so authorities, and then um, DFT and DVSA themselves are also using the service. Um, I'll just quickly cover this um, so I don't forget. If you don't have access, I'll just let you know how to get access. So operators um, that you want to analyze data for must be providing um, timetable and ABL information into the bus open data service. Um, once that's in place, you can request an invitation um, at busopendata at dft.gov.uk. Um, and then you'll receive an invitation that does have a 72 hour expiry on it. So if it does expire after you've been invited, just drop another email and we can uh, reissue that invite. Um, and then once you have access, if, if you're not seeing all the data you're expecting or there's something strange that you want to discuss with us, then please um, let us know at that same email address. So I'm just going to run through now a quick uh, showcase of the existing functionality, just so everyone has a reminder of what is already in the service. 
Um, so when you log in to analyze bus open data, you'll be presented with a dashboard um, that summarizes on-time performance for the operators you have access to. Um, you can see that information across um, the last 28 days, the last seven days, and various other options. And you can see the top and bottom three performing lines in your area. It's worth noting that you do have uh, a selection of operators that are assigned to your organization. That you can choose that. Um, over on the right of the dashboard, you see uh, live vehicle counts from the real-time feeds that we are receiving and any errors with those real-time feeds are flagged as well. From the drop-down, you could select one individual operator. This one doesn't have data, but if we choose one with data, you'll be able to see the aggregations just for that operator. So on time, early and late metrics, as well as vehicle counts and feed summaries as well, just for that individual operator. There's a feed monitoring section where you'll be able to see all the operator feeds that we're receiving into the service, any that are inactive and, and how long they've been inactive for a flag tier. Um, down below, you'll be able to see all the live feeds um, with feed availability, also um, update frequency. Though, so that's um, the period of time between GPS pings that we're seeing on average when there was an outage, when that last outage was, um, and also a sort of um, feed activity history for the last 24 hours. Um, if we select one of these, um, you'll be able to drill down into the live information. So you'll be able to see the number of current and expected vehicles, as well as the average update frequency. You can see the feed activity over the last 24 hours. So how many expected journeys we have, how many active journeys we have, and also for the last 20 minutes. Um, if there were any recent alerts, they'll be at the bottom of the page. If you click into the feed history, you'll be able to see the last 90 days of um, feed activity. Um, and again, any alerts will be flagged at the bottom. Um, you can click back into separate days using that status bar at the top and also see any alerts. So here we're missing a vehicle where we are expecting a vehicle and that will um, flag as an alert in the feed history for you. It's worth noting as well in the My Account area, you can set up notifications um, to be notified if there are any feed outages. So if, for example, feed failures where it's completely missing data or if there is a vehicle count disparity. So for example, here, if there are more than 10 vehicles missing from the feed, um, you can create a notification there and manage those. In the on-time performance section, um, you can see a summary of all the operators you have performance data for. Um, and you can select any historic date range to see on-time performance um, data for those operators. Um, you have filters for timing points or for days of the week, um, particular times of the day that you can apply um, to see what the analysis is like um, based on your chosen filter set. Um, you can see the list of operators below. Um, if you want to, you can search for particular operators um, if you have quite a lot and see the overall metrics for that operator. You can also sort these from sort of highest performance to lowest performance. Um, and once you've done that, you can click into those individual operators. Um, here you've shown a number of graphs. Uh, one of them is a timeline for the date range you've selected. Um, you can also see, see a distribution of delays. Um, you can see uh, performance data aggregated to time of day. So you can see, are there any particular hours of the day that are performing better than others? Um, and you're also able to see that for day of the week. So that are there any particular days of the week that are performing better or worse than others um, for this operator? You can see a summary of all the lines performance in the table below. Um, if you have a lot of lines, um, you'll be able to search for um, an individual line, see summary metrics for that up a line and then click in to see uh, the same detailed graphs but now we see a breakdown of stop performance um, below the graphs so quite kind of granular information at this stage the other thing that's worth mentioning is there is a map on this page so you can click on that map tab um, and you'll see um, if we wait a second So you'll see an on-time performance map here. Um, so you'll be able to see uh, visually if there are any um, areas that are earlier or later than expected on this route. Um, these will be flagged to you visually using the kind of key in the bottom right there. So pink for early, yellow for late. Um, and you can sort of zoom in as well to break um, these stop clusters out as well to see um, 
for example, which side of the road the problem might be on as you zoom in. And it's also worth mentioning in this part of the service that you can um, see delays as well. So again, clustered delays along the route. Um, and it's worth remembering you can apply filters here. So if you did want to start to kind of look at particular days of the week, so perhaps a Monday and a Friday at a particular time of the day, um, you can apply these filters and the map will um, update in order to show you how the um, line is moving um, at those periods of time. Um, so that's a sort of quick um, run, run through of the features we currently have available. Um, so just want to talk about what, what's just been released. Until now, ABOD has been focused mainly on schedule adherence and real-time data provision, um, obviously to help uh, make ABOD even more relevant to national bus strategy and BSIPs. We're hoping to build functionality that um, targets a number of additional metrics on top of schedule adherence. So um, before today, you can find information in the service about on-time performance, um, reliability and delay. Um, as of today, we're adding in functionality to look at journey time metrics, um, and then what we're planning to move on to next, which I'll talk about at the end, are frequency-based metrics. Um, so corridors, this is the, and, and route segment analysis is the new functionality that we've um, released. Um, although we use the term corridor, they're essentially intended to represent any road segments where you'd like to see the journey time um, metrics along them. Um, and once you create these corridors, you'll be able to see journey time metrics across that corridor. Um, the data will again, as with the rest of the service, be limited to the national operator codes that your organization has access to. So that's worth bearing in mind. Um, and if you save a corridor, it will be um, available across your organization. So others within your organization will also be able to see um, the corridors that you've saved and um, use those as well. Um, it's worth mentioning that when creating these corridors, um, you are presented with options um, to create these for, for stops, which we'll look at in a second. Um, and this relies on the timetable data that is um, being supplied into BODS. So again, the more compliant uh, BODS data that we get from operators, the better this um, feature will be working. Um, it's also worth mentioning at the moment, corridors are created in one direction at a time. Um, so if you want to create a corridor that monitors each direction, you will have to create two corridors at the moment. Um, so we just go over the new functionality just so everyone has a good idea of what that functionality includes. So to start with, we'll talk about um, the creation of a corridor and what that looks like and, and how you do that. Um, so within the service, uh, you'll see on the left now, we have a new item called corridors. Um, if you click into this, you'll see a list of corridors your organization has access to. For most people, this will be empty right now. Um, and in order to create a new corridor, you'll have to click this button to create a corridor. Once you're here, um, you should name the corridor something suitable, both for yourself, but also for others within your organization to recognize what that corridor is and what it represents. Um, and then you'll be able to search for the first stop um, along your corridor uh, that you would wish to monitor. So as you search, um, options for stops will come up um, that are relevant to your search term. You can either search by stop name or stop ID. And once you've found a specific stop, you'll be able to select um, that stop. You can check the ID is correct as well. Um, once you select a stop, you're then given um, options to continue building this corridor depending on um, service patterns that run um, that we have access to in the data for BODS. Um, so sometimes you're given different options to go in different directions, so make sure you choose the right um, direction to continue creating your corridor. Um, and as you go along, keep adding stops, you'll keep being suggested um, another stop in the corridor that you may want to add. Again, decision points at particular times, make sure you choose the right um, stop for your corridor. Um, so you, you can keep adding these stops as so um, until you're happy with the corridor that you've created. Let me just keep doing that. So once you've sort of build up, built up and you're happy with your corridors, um, you'll be able to view them in the map here. So you can just review and make sure that you have selected the 
stops that you intended. You can hover over them just to see what stops they are. If you have made a mistake, you can click the remove button and um, go back and essentially uh, correct yourself. Um, as I said before, it's worth just zooming in here and seeing there is a direction indicator on here so you can see which direction this corridor is going in. If you want to create a corridor in the other direction, then I suggest you create a separate corridor for that. Once you click finish, um, that corridor will then be saved into this list. Um, and this list can be managed um, quite simply by um, sorting it and also using the delete function as well. Um, so you can sort by alphabet, uh, you can search for a particular corridor name um, and if you want to you can click to delete a corridor and that will delete that corridor across your organization as well. Um, so that is the process for creating a corridor. Um, we'll now move on to the um, analyzing a corridor um, which is probably the more important part of this. Um, so once you've got your list of corridors, you'll be able to click into each one of these um, and see some journey time metrics um, for that corridor. Um, so you'll be able to see the name of the corridor once you click through. Again, you'll be able to select any date range that's um, relevant um, for your analysis um, and you'll be able to see the number of journeys that pass through um, that corridor for the time range you've selected, the number of services that this corridor includes, across different operators and the average journey time as well um, along that corridor. Moving down you'll be able to see uh, a graph of journey time across the time period you've selected. Um, this will show the average journey time in the middle of this graph but also a spread um, so you'll see sort of the maximum and minimum journey time for the time time range you've selected on that day and also an interquartile range as well so it's important you get an idea for the spread of the journey time on each day. And then down below, you'll see a split of the services that run through uh, this corridor, the operator that runs those services, the number of expected uh, journeys, the number of recorded journeys, um, and also the average journey time for each one of those lines. So you can start to see if there are any particular lines that contribute more towards the overall journey time um, than others. Um, if you want to focus on a particular segment, so you want to do some deeper analysis, um, you can use the segment selector at the top. Um, you can select a specific segment if you wish, and that will just show you um, analytics for that individual stop to stop segment. Um, so again, once this information has loaded, you'll be able to see um, the information just for this stop to stop um, link. So there are actually 15 services that run through here. You can see the same um, graph of journey time as well. You can select different segments if you wish. Um, so if you want to kind of go along the corridor and see if there's any particular stops that are behaving badly, uh, you can do so. And you'll be able to see a list of lines in these actually include lines from two different operators in this case, and the journey time um, for that segment, which you can sort as well. So that's uh, the functionality as of today. Um, we will have hopefully a release that comes out uh, fairly soon with a couple of very small improvements that didn't quite make the release today. Um, so these are uh, essentially the extra tabs here. So we have a time of day tab, um, a day of the week tab and the distribution tab that won't be there today, but hopefully will be there quite soon. Um, so this as well will allow you in a similar way to on-time performance to see a distribution of journey time um, across that corridor um, in a sort of minute by minute bin and the number of journeys that belong in each minute across that corridor. Um, you'll also be able to see this aggregated to day of the week um, so if there are any particular days that do better than others, both in terms of average journey time, but also in the spread of that data um, as well. And the same for time of day, are there any particular hours of the day that do better than others um, in terms of average journey time and the spread of journey times as well. Um, so hopefully that will um, be coming up uh, fairly soon um, and we'll let you know when that, when that comes out. Um, before we open up the floor to any questions we'll just talk briefly about what we're aiming to move on to next um, so essentially the next thing for us is to look at frequency metrics as I 
um, spoke about earlier. Um, so we'd like to provide some metrics about how frequently services, how frequent services operate. Um, so initially we'll focus on the definition that's already in use. So we'll be looking at routes that have six or more um, buses in an hour. And at times of frequent service, we'll indicate um, if the service is frequent and also report the excess wait time with some metrics and some graphs for that. Um, I'm sure at some point we'll have a webinar focused specifically on this, but this is just to let you know what is coming up next. Um, so hopefully that's been informative for everyone. I, I can see the chat has been quite active and I'm sure Amy and Patrick will let me know if there are any questions for me to answer. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Um, we have had a few questions. There's a couple that we hope we've managed to answer in the chat during the presentation, but there's a few um, that we wanted to come to um, as part of this session. Um, so one is from Angharad and she asks, is there a maximum number of stops that you can add per corridor? Um, I would have to check with the team. I think it's about 10 at the moment, um, but this it's, it is quite easily changed on our side. Um, we just don't want to have kind of infinitely long corridors, um, but we would, we were quite happy to have feedback on that and, and make some changes if, if more or more stops are required, essentially. Thanks, Dan. Um, and um, there was something that cropped up earlier in the presentation um, where Lee was asking a question based um, around um, punctuality for timing points data only versus um, all of the data. And I just wondered, Dan, if you might be able to just show everybody where in ABOD you're able to view the performance data using the toggle to select um, timing points only um, versus everything. Sure. So can you see my screen here? And so yeah. zoomed in enough. <laughs> yeah, that looks good to me. Thank you. Cool. Um, so if you click in the on-time performance tab, as you move along these screens, so this is sort of, if you have multiple operators, you'll see a screen with multiple operators here. There's a sort of tab at the top here. It's, it's um, defaulting to all stops. If you click timing points, um, all of the information on the page will uh, recalculate just for timing points only. Um, Again, if you go into individual operators, you'll be able to see this um, at the top, um, focus on timing points, because that's what we previously selected. Um, and then again, at an individual line level, uh, this will kind of persist all the way through. So you can either look at a view of the page for all of the stops or just for timing points only. Thank you, Dan. And hopefully, Lee, that helps um, a little bit in terms of your earlier questions. Um, I know that you've also pointed out that there's a slight discrepancy in terms of advice that you've received um, to do with the need to publish um, data for non-timing points. And I know that, Tim, you mentioned that we should pick that up um, separately, which I agree with. Let's definitely catch up with you on that, Lee. Um, in terms of other questions, um, so Devon has asked, um, are journeys only included if they serve all stops along the corridor? And if so, is there a way to include stats for journeys that serve the partial list of stops? Um, at the moment, it's it the journey the journeys are only included if they serve every stop that you've chosen. Um, I, I guess the second part of the question is it's certainly possible as a future development. At the moment, you'd have to click through each one of the individual segments to see which journeys are running through those. Um, so at the moment, it may be a bit more manual, but we take that feedback on board that perhaps you'd want to see um, all of the services. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Devon. Hopefully that helped. Um, Michael has asked, um, rather than entering every stop one at a time, can you import a route as a whole corridor if you want to review along a whole route? Um, do you mean, well, I guess this, this might end up being quite conversational, but it, I guess, do you mean up, as in choosing a specific line or route and then using that as the basis for your corridor? I imagine um, that that's what Michael means. I would okay. say a specific line on the basis, like say the 31 from Swindon to Malmesbury to do an analysis along the entire route. Okay, that, that's a good uh, idea. It, it, exceed, it exceeds your 10 at the moment, I'm sure. At the moment, yeah. No, but all this feedback is really useful. So yeah, we can, we can take that on board and have a look at that request. Thanks, Michael. Um, so Dan asked, will data 
uh, what data will be made available for use by external companies or will it all uh, remain only available to operators and local authorities. Um, so at the moment, um, it is only available to operators and local authorities, plus obviously the DFT um, and DBSA and OTC. Um, we are aware that there's quite a strong interest in this data um, by other third parties. And so that's something um, that is with DFT for consideration uh, longer term, but at present, um, use of the tool and the data within it um, is restricted just to DFT um, operators and local authorities as things stand. Um, but thanks, Dan, for, for your question, and, and we'll add that to the um, other um, interests that we've had um, from third parties um, in also getting access to the data. Um, and Michael also asked, what is the timescale for the release of the excess weight functionality, accepting that things may run late? I absolutely love the puns, by the way, Michael. Um, and um, we're hoping to get that out um, around March time um, next year, and we hope we won't cause you an excess weight with that functionality. Um, and Lee, I'm reading your um, message just now. So the um, the corridor tool seems to be very good at quickly building a route. This seems much better than the spreadsheet based tool provided by the DFT. Would it not be a good idea to develop, to develop the web based replacement for the DFT tool based on the same code? Um, it's a really good suggestion, Lee. We'll certainly pass that back um, for consideration. Thank you. Um, and Randall has um, made um, uh, an observation that he thinks it would be good to um, to have corridors able to be split into services, for example, where the corridor is quite long, for example, the entry and exit points of the service into the LTA area. I don't know, Dan, whether you've got any initial thoughts on that. Um, I feel like I'd like Randall perhaps to drop me an email and we could chat, because I'm not sure I quite understand um, what that means at the moment, but I certainly do want to understand exactly what that means and have a chat about it. Yeah, that would be great, Randall. What I'll do is I'll just post Dan's email um, address in the chat box. Um, and if you'd like to um, drop Dan an email, as Dan said, it'd be great to pick that suggestion up with you and talk about it more. Um, and so just reading the more recent questions. Um, so. Uh, to which extent are you using road network topology data to run the mapping of Siri VM reporting on journey times? Assuming you are, I'd be interested to know which source you use. My understanding is that BODS does not include road layout data. Um, so that is right. Um, we are using um, topology data. I don't personally know the source of the topology data, to be completely honest. I don't know, Dan, whether you know more than me. Um, I guess I think the answer to this question is, well, apart from the map layer that you see in the UI, um, the actual underlying data that we're putting on that map come, does all come from BODS data um, or trans this trans exchange or, or the NAPTAN database that, that kind of um, is underlying to that. Um, so the source of that data that we're presenting on the map is, is BODS data only. Thanks, Dan. Hopefully that helps. And Helen has asked, um, is it now possible to export um, on-time performance results per route for multiple routes in Excel? Um, I think that the answer to that is um, not yet, but Dan, I think that you've got a small update on the plans to do with that, haven't you? Yeah, so that, that will be in the next release. Um, so it will, it will come with the frequency um, services. So yeah, we've planned that one in. Thanks, Dan. And Vivian has also asked, um, as per the on-time performance, would it also be possible to export out a CSV or Excel of the corridor analysis? I don't know, is that part of the next plan, Yeah, exactly. Plans, Dan? We, we can pick that up at the same time, yeah. Great. Thank you, Helen and Vivian. Any other questions from anyone? We'll just give it another moment or two to see if um, there are any uh, questions left. Just whilst we're giving everyone a moment, um, I just want to mention that we have got a um, feedback survey, which we would really appreciate um, if you guys could um, fill out. Um, it is different from the previous um, feedback surveys that we have used. And so if you've come to other webinars 
um, to do with ABOD, um, you may have received um, feedback forms um, from those. This one is a little different. And so if you've previously filled one out, we would really appreciate if you could also fill uh, this new one out. Um, and we'd really encourage everyone um, to share your feedback. There's only one mandatory question in this survey. And so if you want, it could probably take you about 10 seconds to complete. And we'd really appreciate if you'd be willing to do that. But there's also space for you to provide any other thoughts or um, feedback that you would like to if you want to spend more time um, sharing your thoughts with us. So I'll send the link for that in a moment. Um, I can see that a few comments have come in. Um, Richard mentioned that he'd not seen this before, but it looks incredibly useful. And thanks for the demo. That's really great to hear. Thank you, Richard, for your feedback. Um, and in terms of um, an earlier answer, are you planning to break down journey times to transit and dwell times? Dan, do you want to comment on that? Um, not at the moment, although, again, we're open to feedback. If that is something that people would find useful, we can um, look at that as well. Thanks, Dan. Um, good to hear that Triumph um, enjoyed the presentation. Thanks, Triumph. And Angharad has said, in one of my tests, I can see that there are some very fast journey times. Is there any way to identify the cause of them? Um, I guess um, I'm happy to start answering that one and Dan feel free to chip in. Um, in terms of identifying the cause of them, I think that would be very difficult to do within ABOD. It probably is a matter that's best taken up with the operator um, as they're um, likely to have a better idea of what might have caused um, the fast journey times. I don't know, Dan, if you want to add anything to that. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's probably the best answer, Amy, at the moment. Yeah. Um, and Richard's asking, um, sorry, can you confirm how many characters a service is uniquely matched on? We have services with five characters that don't seem to match because BODS only uses four. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Richard, that maybe you're talking there about national operator codes and the characters um, for the national operator code. Dan, would that be your interpretation as well? Possibly. Um, I guess if if you could probably drop an email to, um, I think the right one is bus open data, dft.gov.uk, we probably want to have a chat about that in more detail. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, Richard. And then Michael has made a request. Um, can the bus stop names contain a bit more information? Um, National Gazetteer, common name and direction would be far more helpful than just common name. I think, Dan, that's in the backlog at the moment as well, isn't yes. it? Yeah, we we definitely agree. So it's it's on the um, it's in the backlog, but I'll have to go back and check exactly when we can commit to doing that. But it's certainly something that we we agree with. Thank you, Michael, Just, and thank you, Lee, for your feedback too. Sorry to uh, to interrupt, Damien, Dan, but I think in terms of Richard's question for the uh, four characters, that might also be to do with the line reference, whereby they can use four characters in bods but the real time might come through as a line reference with five characters, which can cause a, obviously a difference. Um, but yeah, that would definitely be worth uh, chasing up with the bus open data team. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, so we'll just give it one more moment in case of any final questions. Um, and I will also um, post the link to the feedback questionnaire. Um, which, like I say, it should be really, really speedy to fill out um, and we'd really love to get your feedback. So um, thank you in advance for, for taking part. Um, I don't see any more questions coming through, so I think that at this point we can hand back to you, Tim. Yeah, thank you, Amy. Um, thank you, uh, Dan and Patrick as well. Um, the link to the feedback questionnaire will come out on email um, shortly after we yeah, end this session. So um, you will have uh, more opportunity to uh, to fill it out other than just uh, the here and now. Um, thank you for that um, session, um, Dan, Patrick and Amy. That was uh, very good and useful. Um, the previous sessions that we've um, had on Analyze Bus Open Data Service, they're all available through the RTIG um, website. They've got their own special page um, and a link to the recording of this session 
will go on there and we'll email that out to you um, as well in the next uh, couple of days. A um, few plugs for some um, upcoming um, sessions. So um, middle of the month, 13th of December, um, we've got an update um, on where the project that uh, is trying to standardize content management system to displays um, has got to. Um, and then um, on the 15th of December, um, if you were falling asleep, this slide certainly wakes you up. Um, very bright. Um, 15th of December, we've got a session that's looking at what your requirements might be for a prediction engine with an eye to some thinking that the Department of Transport is doing um, at the moment about what a national prediction service might look like um, to pick up on uh, one of Lee's questions um, earlier. So please join us for that if you've got some ideas about what you would want to see in a prediction engine. Um, so thank you everybody for joining this afternoon. Thank you to um, Dan, Patrick and Amy again, and thank you everybody for your time watching this session and all of your questions. Um, those of you that we've said we'll uh, get back to you, we will. Um, and please do feel free to um, either drop the um, BOD support line or Dan an, an email if you've got any more that uh, you've not asked uh, this afternoon. So thank you for your time um, this afternoon and have a good rest of the day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for watching this RTIG webinar. To find out more about RTIG and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you. Thank <music> you.